Three months since my divorce was final. Doing better than I would have thought. Final part. The communications wall, the exes over tours, and taking back power. As previously stated, there were a few loose ends to tie up taxes, a common bank account, and health insurance. The ex and I were still interacting through email about important matters. What I didn't comprehend was that this gave her much more authority than she deserved. Also, it wasn't good for me to keep talking to her on such a basic level. One of my closest friends is a lawyer. Something I used to take for granted, but now value is that lawyers are well-versed in areas other than the law. Human behavior, psychology, and negotiating are also important aspects of their education. So my friend had, coincidentally, went through the same situation as me. The only difference was that they were not married. Everything else, however, remained the same. The romance lasted eight years. He emotionally withdrew, and she started cheating, and so forth. Everything is the same. He and I went fishing one day, like we always do, and we spent many hours on the lake together. When we were discussing my issue, he said a number of intriguing things. One was that, despite the fact that she was the one who filed for divorce, she would ultimately contact me, and not for any required cause or reasons. This irritated me. She was the one who sought the divorce, and she was plainly concerned with someone else. Second, he told me that I should stop talking to her. Rather, he advised that I use an intermediary. So, if she needs to speak with me, she communicates through the middleman, who interacts with me and then with her. She's practically not permitted to speak to me anymore. And, more intriguingly, Hash 2, at least according to him, would likely assist Hash 1. As a result, he agreed to act as an intermediary. The first item of business was to let her know about the new arrangement. I also didn't want her to know my address, but I needed certain stuff shipped to me that I had left behind when I moved out. In addition, after the tax return has been submitted, I would need a copy of it. We filed jointly for 2020. So she was advised to just send everything to my parents' address, and they would deliver everything to me. I'm not sure what her motivations are or were, but she started making these altruistic gestures soon after. There are probably just a few options, and they may be any combination of them. She just wants to know, or think, that she can have me back for the sake of her ego. She wants to test the waters because she is grieving the loss of the relationship and really want to rebuild it. She is unhappy that things were left where she is the piece of who cheated, and she doesn't like the fact that I, my family, my friends, and some of our mutual acquaintances all have a terrible opinion of her. She's hoping for even the tiniest of good reactions so she can feel better about herself and know that I don't think she's a jerk, fat f asterisk c king chance. My abrupt turning of the script in disconnecting her from communications through her for a loop, and the fact that I'm not merely accessible to email any time she wants is toying with her mind slash ego, and perhaps several more that I haven't considered. Whatever. In any event, it's better for me, and that's all that matters. It's also beneficial to my current relationship for my wife to know that I'm no longer talking to that B asterisk TCH. So, since the communication was cut off, here's what's transpired. Before the divorce was finalized, I said that I would want to bring the two male cats with me. We had three cats, two males, and a female. The guys were undoubtedly closer to me, while the female tolerated me but adored her. Cats are, I guess? I'm not sure. Anyway, she made a big deal over my taking the two males, despite the fact that she had earlier indicated I could have whatever animals I chose. So I sent F asterisk CK it and handed them over to her. When I moved my out in December, I had to emotionally disconnect from them but I had to do what I had to do. Now, out of nowhere, she contacts my legal acquaintance and offers me the two men. Her excuse is that she doesn't spend enough time at home with children to give them the attention they need. The problem with such argument is that the two guys are perfectly fine. They are always playing with one another. They're linked at the hip and have each other. If any of those cats is being neglected, it's the unfortunate female who despises the other cats and just cares about her ex-wife. But isn't that not the cat she offered? It doesn't make sense, at least not according to her logic. As much as I wanted to take my two sons, I had to think about the consequences. One of the reasons is that my girlfriend is allergic to cats. Second, I don't want to give the ex another cause to contact me in the future. She has a habit of asking me, how are the cats? Whenever she feels like it, or even worse, changing her mind and wanting them back. Also, I don't like having reminders of my previous life wandering about my current existence. He's not interested. The lawyer replies back. A few weeks later, 
She contacts him and gives the login information for me to claim my frequent flyer points, which I had forgotten about, didn't care about, and had never asked for. Then, a few weeks later, instead of contacting him, she emails me directly. This time, she says she wanted to get me the taxes that I'd previously asked. She says that even though I had previously asked that she send that to my parents' address, there were some other goods in the mail for me, and that if I just provide her my address, she'll ship it to me directly so that my parents don't have to send it to me. Really? I've already told you to send IT all to my parents. Obviously, I'm having her send trash to my parents exactly because I don't want her to know where I live. I don't want her knocking on my door. I don't want to answer the door to discover two cats waiting for me, or anything else that may happen. She also asked me to set up mail forwarding. Obviously, all that needed to be stated was, can you help set up mail forwarding? And it should have been routed to my legal pal instead of me, so I had him respond to her, reminding her that she should send anything meant for me to the address that we had previously instructed her to send items to. Heard I haven't spoken on social media since late November. Even after the divorce, she remained in contact with my family and acquaintances. Not only that, but the horrible harpy still kept images of her and me, including our wedding photos, on her Facebook page. Well, maybe she simply hasn't been on social media, so she hasn't deleted that material because of that, you could argue. Well, she returned to social media in late February and changed her identity back to her maiden name, I had asked that she not use my name after the divorce was finalized, but she kept all those relationships and photographs up. It had always concerned me, but I had never expressed my displeasure. Anyway, a few of weeks ago, I posted a photo of me and my girlfriend at dinner within 12 hours of that post. She cut all ties to my family and friends and ultimately erased the photos. Yeah, finally, that wasn't the reason I shared the photo, but it was a pleasant surprise. I didn't believe she'd notice since we're not even linked. But since we were linked to so many of the same individuals, I'm thinking it appeared on her timeline when one of them liked it. So despite her divorcing me and cheating on me, she's worried by the fact that I've found another woman. What a jerk. That's all I have to say. So, that's where things stand right now. I'm not completely recovered. The betrayal still aches. Other days are better and some days are worse than others. But I would admit that I am getting better every day. I would never have guessed two months ago that I would be where I am now. And I wasn't even sure I'd be alive in five months. It's not that I want her back. It's just that I don't. She stinks. If anything, I wish I hadn't married her. I'm also irritated because eight years of my life have been stolen from me and I can't get them back. My thirties were away from me at a rate of 80%. Any fond memories I had of us were tainted and damaged. But every day, I feel less like that. Yesterday was the first time that none of that nonsense was the first thing that sprang to mind when I woke up. And it occurred again today, so certainly things are improving. I have a far brighter future ahead of me. I was rescued from a bad circumstance. Oh, and the man she was having an affair with? Lol. I spoke with his ex-wife, a he's minted man, and supposedly quite uncomfortable in bed in general. When I heard this, I replied to myself, Come on, I know you're upset at the guy, of course you're going to say that. She said, No, really. He's seen various therapists over the years, but nothing has helped. Lol. It's a bummer for the ex. I know how long it takes her, and three minutes, let alone sixty seconds, is insufficient. On average, we're talking about at least eight minutes. We may have had our issues, but that was never an issue for me.